So I have to, okay, thank you. Good morning. It's a day of celebration, but we really have to face reality. And yesterday evening or afternoon, I received a call from Luan stating that Bill McLean was found in his house dead. So, uh, you didn't hear me? Yes, that's the reality. Um, Bill was living alone. It's reported that the neighbors didn't see much action in his house and they called the police and when the police went in, they found Bill. He may have died two days ago. So um, I'm going to ask us as a congregation to stand for a minute of silence, and then we will sing the first verse of How Great Thou Art. May the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. And Lord, may you receive Bill into your gracious keeping. Amen. The first verse of How Great Thou Art. In number 238. 238. Sorry, Pat. We just have to do this spontaneously. 238. I will be in touch with uh, Luan today. She's going to the funeral home to make arrangements. And so I will, you would receive an email as to what the arrangements are about. Thank you. And good morning to all of you here. Welcome to the service from Emmanuel United Church for those of you who are on Zoom and greetings also to those of you who are watching later on YouTube. Here are other, other announcements. Okay. Pastoral Care Committee will be meeting this Wednesday, September 8th 
16th at 1.30 in the fireside room. The Bazaar Committee, it will also meet. Okay, so not the 18th, come at the 25th instead. Okay. Bazaar Committee, it will meet on Wednesday, September 18th at 7 p.m. in the fireside room. Tuesday, not Wednesday? Okay. Um, other notes. Jane Lesbridge, a happy event. The family would like to invite all the members of Emmanuel to a luncheon to celebrate her 90th birthday. It will be held Sunday, today. Okay. No changes, it will be today. At 12 o'clock in the Friendship Hall. Please come and celebrate with them and with each other. From Barry Montgomery, he wishes to send his thanks to everyone for their cards, their emails, and words of support following Pat's passing. Next games night at Emmanuel, Friday, September 20th. Okay, September 20th, 7 p.m. You can play progressive euchre or Mexican dominoes. The fee is $5, but the way the, the money goes to help with, um, I think, the, the goodies we eat, but mostly it's given to worthwhile causes in the church and community, so. Um, badminton. There will be no badminton this coming Friday, September the 20th. Stay tuned for future announcements about badminton games. The Compassionate Friends of Hamilton, who are a subgroup of the Compassionate Friends of Canada, is part of a network of support groups that offer grief and trauma support following the death of a child, no matter the age or cause. Please go to our online news for more information. Um, John Taylor will be a minute person, and then I'll come back to see if we're celebrating any anniversaries or birthdays this week. Good morning, everyone. A few things from our last council meeting. Worship committee would like some more volunteers. They're getting spread a little bit thin. That's so an that's yeah, it's an encouragement. Um, I haven't got the mallet out yet, so. Uh, if you care to do that, get a hold of Tessica or one of the members of the committee. Secondly, how many here know that next year is our 100th anniversary of the United Church? Good. So seeing as y'all had your hands up, you're all going to help with the committee. We're going to apply for a grant so we can have a community dinner. We just need people to organize. We don't need anyone to cook. We don't need anyone to set up, take down, just organize and help apply for the grant and decide what we're gonna do. Um, see Tessica or myself. And that's it for me today. Thank you. Thanks, John. My cheering is because I'm one of the members of the Faith and Worship Committee, and we would very much like your help and your membership on the committee. We really are not intimidating. Um, now, is there anyone celebrating an anniversary this coming week? Anyone celebrating a birthday? Actually, I'm celebrating an anniversary, but I have a quick announcement. Sure. Why are we start rehearsing next Sunday after church? Um, as of last Sunday, I celebrated my 49th anniversary as a church organist and choir director. <laughs> a bit of a milestone, and I also celebrated a birthday last week. Born in September. It's the best month of the year. Engine? Nine is close to perfection. 
So we're going to sing happy birthday to Richard. That's the end of today's announcements. Oh, did anyone have any others? We center our hearts on Christ who is the light, the light of the world. We light this candle to center our hearts on the light that lights our path. Jesus Christ, the light of the world is with us, and we worship him. The hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Seated, please. Let us pray. O oh God, whose name is above every name, we invoke your presence with mingled joy and hesitation. With joy because we know that before we turn in your direction, you have already turned in ours. yet with hesitation because we also know that as we have been quick to claim you as our heavenly parent, we have been slow to claim our neighbors 
as sisters and brothers. Despite our smallness, you have not withheld your name or your presence. Unwilling to accept the name of yesterday as a name for today, you pursue us with grace and patience beyond anything we deserve or understand. For this, O oh Lord, we adore you. Face to face with your love, as undeniable as it is undeserved. We lament our failure to give it to others as freely as we receive it from you. Although we are unworthy of your love, we demand that others be worthy of ours. We define worth in terms not of your gospel, but of our culture. We ignore the scriptural warning against showing partiality and bestow favor on those who earn what we earn, live as we live, vote as we vote, cater to people to whom we cater, and shun the people whom we shun. For misunderstanding and misrepresenting you, O Lord, we ask your forgiveness. And we, we pray that here, as in Nazareth of Galilee, you will so open our eyes to the truth of Christ that we'll understand him rightly and represent him faithfully through Christ our oh Lord. Amen. So your tool today is Jean's 90th birthday celebration. And this hymn was chosen by Jean as one of her favorites. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And after this, we'll invite some of our family members, I think, to pay her tributes. The hymn 337, Blessed Assurance.
city this. Good morning, everyone. Normally, I don't have problems speaking. My son says I, I get paid to talk. Um, but trying to decide how to recognize um, our, our mother, uh, sister, friend, uh, was, was kind of getting difficult for me. I'm a creature of habit. Yesterday morning, every morning I get up, I have my breakfast sitting downstairs watching a little bit of TV before I get ready for work. I had this calling, and no, I'm not to be a minister or, or to join the choir. It said to go and look on our dining room table, and so I did, and to open up a, a box. And I opened it up, and I'm, this is, for some of, some of my family that are here now, they'll know what this is, and for my mom, she will know. But I was looking for something as a symbol of what my mom stands for. And I'm just gonna read part of this to you, and it's a bit of a guessing game for some, and for some of you, it won't be. Set the oven to 375 degrees. It takes 10 to 15 minutes. You add half a cup of shortening, half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of uh, granulated sugar, one egg beaten, one tablespoon water, half a tablespoon vanilla, three quarters a cup of flour, half a cup of, pardon me, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, one and a half cups of quick cooking oatmeal, one cup chocolate chips. Now Marilyn's smiling because she knows what that is. That's the recipe for my mom's famous chocolate chip cookies. Ever since I was a child, any time that my brothers, and you'll meet them uh, both, they'll be here uh, at lunchtime, whenever we went anywhere or we had special friends over or there was a birthday for one of her grandchildren or one of us or a special event at this church or something to do with scouting, it was grandma's chocolate chip cookie recipe and chocolate chips that we, or chocolate chip uh, cookies that we wanted. If you ever visited her home that uh, her and my dad, uh, uh, the only home that they had uh, uh, together, uh, it was about this big. And yet she could turn out hundreds and hundreds of cookies. And many of you shared those when she brought them to church. And I really couldn't think of and I know it sounds a bit strange, but why chocolate chip cookies and, and you know, what, what that represents about my mother. But it's really about her caring and loving of others. It's never and never been about herself. Um, you may know her and call her your sister. In fact, one of her sisters are here today. Uh, and thank you very much for coming. Uh, grandma, great grandma, friend, um, and, and, and the list goes on, um, but I can't think of a more special person. And yes, she's my mother, um, but she's always been about giving and never about taking back. And I really think that we owe this congregation a debt of gratitude. This has been her second home for, her, for most of her life. As you know, she was a, fa a founding uh, member of this church. She spent 40 years as our treasurer. Um, she spent hundreds of hours in, uh, in the kitchen uh, serving others. And today we get to serve her. And that was the most difficult thing to, to do is to tell her, no, you're not participating. She said, no, I don't want this done because we had to tell her. Uh, but again, that's about her. Not, two funny little stories. I was at a doctor's appointment with her and the doctor was talking to her just about her life and what she's been doing. And his expectation was that she was sitting at home in her, in her new residence with her feet up. And she instead told him that, well, tomorrow I'm gonna to be uh, volunteering at the mission store. And that, that doctor looked at her and, and looked at the chart and said, you're 89 years old right now, aren't you? She said, yes. He said, and you still volunteer? And she said, yes, but unfortunately not as many hours a week as I used to. Um, you know, it's, that's just a, a testament to what uh, Jean is about. Um, Mom, 
the only thing that's missing on here when people make this recipe and it doesn't always turn out they don't have the love that you you put into your recipes so thank you very very much and one of the members of the congregation has uh, has a poem for you Good morning, everyone. I couldn't let this day pass without really writing something special for Jean. I love her. She is one of those who really welcomed my family and I when we came to this, this church from Mount Hamilton United in 2012. Dear Jean, your 90th birthday, Jean, we are celebrating today a precious milestone in your life, shared in this special way, with those who love you, those you love, blessed moments to hold fast. And so my prayer is that you will know the joys that last and last. You demonstrate in all you do your many charms and grace, and love that you hold in your heart does shine through on your face. May this day be filled with blessings poured from the font above. And if past years you're assessing, may your thoughts be filled with love. For not only am I sending birthday wishes on the way, but hope, peace, and joy are blending in happiness this day. May all the hopes and dreams you have now faithfully come true. Congratulations, Jean, and a happy 90th to you. Glenn and Linda, do we have any more? Thank you. We have now the readings from the Holy Scripture. This morning's psalm is number 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet, their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens, he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned in keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. 
do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of a great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The second reading this morning is from the book of James, chapter 3, and I'll be reading verses 1 to 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a force is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a whole of it, as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who were made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives, or a grapevine, figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. And our third reading for this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, and I'll be reading verses 27 to 38. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do we, you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the son of man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, 
and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. May God bless to us these readings from his holy word. After I played this for the communion service last week, I had a couple of people ask if I would sing it again. It's been quite some time. It's in Latin. The translation goes, Merciful Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world, grant them rest. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, grant them eternal rest.
Who is wise among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. There is that dinosaur called Barney. Do you normally watch it? Yes. Barney the dinosaur, and there he, it has a song that says, I love to run and jump and play. There are so many things to do. I love it even better when it's with a friend like you. Being together with friends is what I like to do. Being together with friends, together the whole day through. Any day, any time, day or night, rain or shine, together with friends like you. Dominic, my friend. I'm happy that you are here today. Yes. <laughs> today we gather as friends to share in worship and to celebrate with Jean Lethbridge, who has been a pillar in this church. Jean celebrates her 90th birthday. Jean has been a blessing to this community as a scout leader, a church treasurer, a member of the pastoral community, a devoted mother and partner. Jean's life as a servant and mother has called us to take seriously the warning issued by the Epistle James. Do not be double soul, double self, because those who are double soul and double self are easily tossed around. Lacking stability, lacking sustainability, integrity, and gravity. James warned, sorry, James warned that such person develop a selfish appetite, serve half-heartedly, and cause inconsistency because such person has inner conflict. To overcome a double-minded self, we are called to seek the wisdom from above. For the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And the harvest of righteousness is shown in peace for those who make peace. The life that seeks wisdom from above keeps community strong and focused and is solid of substance. James is here sharing that wisdom is not simply knowledge or cleverness, or astuteness, but rather a profound understanding of what the good life is or ought to be. Such wisdom produces concord and harmony between persons and groups. It contrasts sharply with calculating egoism which is the cause of social disorder and envy and every vile practice. Jean, 
you have shown to this community how to serve a community in sincerity, seeking the wisdom from God. Your 90 years are filled with sacrifice, loss, grief, pain, and struggles. Yet, you have worked hard to keep community together because you display integrity and stability and a genuine love for people, both young and old. Your life is not only touched by God, but your life is a life that seeks the things above that have touched others. As you celebrate, we at Emmanuel offer God thanks for your devotion and service and pray for your good health and peace of mind. You are one of the stalwarts of this community and your name will ever be written in the history of this church. But not very well, as I called upon us to note, you are not finished with. God is not finished with you as yet. This is not the end. It is just a part of your journey in life. From your life and with the issue or the warning issued by James, may we build up rather than tear down. Hope rather than live in despair. Be silent when we do not have good to say and thank God for, the, for God's mercy in all of our celebrations. To sum it up, may you continue, as the Apostle Paul says, to seek the things that are above. Where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not only on earthly things. For you, Jean, have died, and your life is now hidden with Christ above. You have given up your selfish ways, that's the death, in order to find new life in Christ. Tell yourself daily that you have been a blessing and others have been blessings because of you. I call upon us, all of us, to live that life of community in faith as we seek to put in practice what James has called us to do. Though we cannot control the tongue and the heart, we have the one from above who can control us. Wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, is able to keep us intact. Pray for that spirit. Obey the spirit. Continue to seek the spirit. For in wisdom, there is peace, pleasantness, and joy. One hymn writer, writing about wisdom says, her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her flowery part is peace. What a joy when we can live in community in peace and celebrate each other's milestone in joy, knowing that because heart has touched heart, 
we are all God's children and we are all called into service by God. Let your service be a service that will help to prosper and build up, not a service that will tear down and destroy. As the Spirit has blessed Jean, so I ask God's Spirit to bless each of us that our hearts will be set at peace and the tongue, the heart, the hands, the feet will be controlled by the Spirit that unites us. May God bless us and may God bless you, Jean a servant doing the will of your master. Let us pray. As we celebrate let us once more take time to reflect and celebrate the life of our departed brother Will. Will was an encourager, a scholar, a servant. He worshiped here even when times were difficult for him. And his words to me whenever he enters the, this door, you are looking good. We may criticize all we want to criticize in this church. But this church has produced some wonderful servants of the Lord. And we celebrate because both Will and Jean have been and Jean continue to be a blessing in this church. Let us pray. If we lack wisdom and we have fallen short, if our minds are only fixed on the things we can see and there is no faith in us, Lord, have mercy. And today, as we stretch our hands in need, we also stretch them to give. We receive a blessing, we offer a blessing. And we pray that you will strengthen each of us, guide, protect, and prosper us in your way. Let your spirit enlighten us in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We sing the Lord's Prayer.
Folks, the peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share that peace in our offering as we give our offering and we stand and sing lustily. Give thanks with a grateful heart. It is through your goodness, most graceful God, that we have become a gifted people. A natural talent, generously used, your work may be done, and your name glorified. Amen. Thank you. And another of Jim's favorite hymn, I, the Lord of sea and sky, here I am, Lord, send me.
We hold hands as we sing, go now in peace. And please note that after the service at 12 o'clock, Jean is inviting you to share in the hall to celebrate her, 20, her 20th birthday, her 90th birthday. <laughs> Bless you, and please remember summer is not over yet. <laughs> Continue to enjoy the weather.